So with the big shakeup at 343 recently, with Bonnie and the other guy leaving, and the general disaster that has been Halo Infinite up to this point, a big question on everyone's mind is, can they even save Infinite now? Uh, well, there's no doubt in my mind that 343 has done irreparable damage to the Halo franchise and to Infinite. There's a significant number of people that were interested in Infinite, that now, after all the bullshit, will simply just never come back. That being said, I believe any game can be saved, but it takes two parts. First, you need to get the game back in the spotlight, get people interested and in coming back to the game to check it out again. And the way to do this is not with shitty store updates, or lackluster events, or even with cash grab tie-ins like fucking cookbooks. No, I think the only way to get Infinite back in the spotlight is with a big new feature. And when you talk about saving Halo Infinite, there's two big features that people often bring up. First up, there's Forge, right? One of Halo's unique strengths. It's just around the corner and looks to be better than ever with node graphs and some of the amazing things people have already made. As long as Forge isn't broken or fucked with microtransactions when it comes out, then we should be in a pretty good spot with it. Forge is paramount to the longevity and success of any Halo game. Putting the tools in the hands of the players to make their own fun is key. And second is the all but confirmed Battle Royale mode. I think they're calling it Tatanka. Battle Royale is a hot trend in gaming right now, and I honestly do think a Battle Royale would suit Halo's setting and gameplay really well. Especially if they throw in some fresh new ideas, a little Halo spice, like some PvE component or maybe a flood-based mode. Now I honestly do think that either of these features, Forge or Battle Royale, will be enough to get some people to come check out the game again. But in a perfect world, I think Halo would blend these two huge features together, and allow players to forge their own Battle Royale maps and experiences. I think this could easily steal a lot of players from other Battle Royale games, as the ability to truly create your own Battle Royale map is something that to my knowledge no game has really attempted. Like I know Fortnite has a map editor, but I don't think people actually use it to make Battle Royale maps, they just make like weird custom games on it and stuff, trying to sell you V-Bucks. Now earlier I said to save a game you need two parts, and the second part is crucial and a lot of people seem to forget about it. And that's the point that you need people to actually fucking stay on the game once they're there. And for that, we're still going to need massive overhauls to the progression system, challenges, events, and other areas of infinite that still need a lot of love. There is honestly a real danger here that if the game doesn't have a good backbone and 343 blows their load too early again, then what will happen is people will come back try the cool new thing, realize the actual game still doesn't have any substance, and leave. Then we're back to square one, but with one less card to play to get people to come back. And that's basically what happened to the game at launch. It had all this hype, people came and checked it out, they realized the game sucked, and they left. And there's a real danger we could see history repeat itself. I mean, it's kind of already happening. Look at Forge, right? It comes out in November, and that's assuming there's no delays. Hopefully it functions properly, but even if it does, the custom game browser isn't slated to come out until March, and there's still no sign of infection which is the foundation of most of the iconic Halo custom games. That's also assuming that custom games will save and work properly when Forge comes out too. So think about it, Forge will come out, people will come onto the game, and they'll go, okay, what do I do now? Maybe they're not really good at forging maps, how do they find a Forge map to play? Even if they are good at forging maps, what modes are they going to be able to use to make their Forge maps with? How are they going to share them? Will they be able to save them? There's already a lot of issues with Forge, and it's not even out yet, and this is all assuming that it works properly. Alright, so let's put our thinking caps on, let's do a little roleplay, and let's pretend that I'm running the show over at 343. How do we proceed? Okay, first of all, we cannot delay Forge. If anything on this roadmap is delayed again, 343 will just be a fucking laughing stock once again. So come rain or shine, Forge is coming out November, so we have to play a bit longer term. I do, however, fully believe Infection can be programmed and ready by March for Season 3. It's not a complicated mode. We need Infection to launch with the custom game browser, and holy shit, we need custom games to actually be reliable by then too. And if we have to pull resources and delay another fucking mode, like VIP or some shit, then do it. Infection should be a top priority game mode, and I don't know why it seems like it's not to 343. And if you're sitting there scratching your head thinking Infection isn't that important, then I don't know how many custom games you've played in Halo, but like 90% of them use Infection as a base. Alright, so now we've got a functioning Forge mode, Infection in the game, the browser and customs are working and reliable. Good, right? Now we can look to Season 4, which is in June. 
season four has to be the one where we really save the game. It's the one where people are going to come back. So we're going to need another big feature, right? It could be a campaign DLC, Battle Royale, Halo 5 Warzone 2.0, Invasion 2.0, doesn't really matter as long as it is interesting enough to get people to come back. But more importantly, by season four, along with this new mode, we need a proper honest to god progression system with ranks and unlockable cosmetics and rewards that correspond to those ranks. And we should have better social features like an in-game service record. Now down the line we can have more sandbox additions, right? New vehicles, weapons, equipment, maybe overhaul how events work and make them feel like a bigger deal that actually makes the game feel different, especially the fracture events that are meant to run through a whole season. Obviously, there's a ton of fluff I can say they should add, like playable elites or better emblem editing, and yeah, those things would be nice, but I think what I've tried to lay out here is the bare necessities, the core of how they can start to get this game back on track. I know it may sound like I'm on some major hopium, but you need to understand the reason I turned to 343 so much, but keep playing a game that has been a massive disappointment to me. The reason I have a channel with like 40 videos ranting about Halo is not because I hate Halo. It's because I love Halo and want it to succeed, and in my opinion, if there's a way to save this game, this is a good way to start towards the long road to redemption. I mean, other games have done it. No Man's Sky was able to make an astounding turnaround, Battlefield 2042 is having a resurgence, and even Star Wars Battlefront 2 from 2017 went from one of the most publicly hated games in the world to a fan favorite that most would admit is actually better than the original. My point is that it's not impossible for this game to turn around, but whether 344 are able to do it remains to be seen. At the end of the day, right, I don't call the shots. I don't know what their thought processes or work days look like. So all I can do is spectate, sit back and watch how they handle this incredibly precarious situation that they place themselves in. And now, a minute of silence to honor the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Also, if the video's over 8 minutes, you get like better ads on it. I'm trying to make that bread, you know? Man's gotta fucking eat.